Well, it's Tuesday. It is. And we're still doing geese. Mm -hmm. Rio Grande Southern geese. Hmm. Last uh, two Tuesdays, we did Rio Grande Southern 5, Goose mm -hmm. 5, and Goose seven. 7. The last goose that the Rio Grande Southern ever built. This, in some ways, is the first goose. Um, clearly, there was a 1, because this mm -hmm. is 2. Yes. And then 1 got scrapped out and has been recreated and is at the museum in Ridgeway. Oh, neat. And uh, it's green instead of silver. There's a lot of things about one that are quite different than, than the other geese. But for, for one thing, it's just a work goose. Mm -hmm. It was just designed to haul tools around. And it was their first attempt at how can we save money by not firing up a steam engine if we just need to take a couple of people out on the track to do track work. Right. And it could pull a trailer with rail on it. Yeah. And so they could go out and do maintenance of way with goose one. And then at some point in time, they decided, you know, what we can do is, um, is haul freight and, and instead of just doing maintenance of way. So they built Goose 2. All of the geese on the Rio Grande Southern were just built by the railroad mm -hmm. out of cars. Right. Um, big, nice luxury cars because those tended to have very powerful engines. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was the next one that they built and sort of a proof of concept that you could, in fact, haul mail. You could, in fact, haul some freight right. and you could, in fact, haul two passengers. At this least, thing, yes. Know. That one probably too This one didn't happen. hold very many people and didn't hold, it didn't hold much of anything. But it proved to them that they didn't need to fire up a steam engine if the entire passenger uh, uh, roster for the day was two people. They could just... Put them in the back seat the here, and <laughs> and I think it can actually hold like like four people, something like that. Because okay. it's really wide. They they widened the car bodies yeah. here. They're not just the standard width. Right. They're close to the standard width. This one is closer to the standard. I think width. actually I think two never got widened. Seven yeah. is also well three four five five four five six and seven were all built out of cars, and uh, they all had wide bodies added, and then. Three of them, they threw those bodies away eventually mm -hmm. and put bus bodies bus on there, body. which is even wider. Right. But seven still has its original car body, mm -hmm. but they widened it. They just took sheet metal right. and, and widened it. This one never had that done. Right. It's just a, just a, a teeny, teeny it's tiny, smaller. tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's really neat. Now I'm trying to remember if I think two is at Golden, Colorado as well. Uh, they, yeah, I think so. I, well, they had them all over there the one time. There's they three, there. three geese there. There's six, mm -hmm. seven, and two, I think. Right. I think that's what's over there. Mm -hmm. One is at Ridgeway, two, mm -hmm. uh, three is uh, at Telluride, I think, four, um, Knott's Berry Farm, or those two are, con I don't know. And then five is at, at Dolores. Six is at the Colorado Railroad Museum, and seven mm -hmm. is at the Colorado Railroad. Wow. So, anyway, of the, the surviving ones, those are, and that's all of them. Right. That's all seven of them, eight, although one is a recreation. So it's kind of neat that they all no managed kidding. to survive, but one of the reasons that they all managed to survive is that these things were being used uh, just to save money mm -hmm. uh, right out to the very end. And as the railroad was being abandoned, uh, this stuff was already really popular with the Rocky Mountain Railroad Club wow. and um, um, the, the Narrow Gauge Motel bought a lot of their equipment. Oh, really? and stuff. So a lot of their equipment <laughs> managed to survive. Hmm. And all of the geese, except for the one that had been scrapped out, number one. Hmm. So two through seven were, were all saved. And uh, they all pop up from time to time now. Well, this one's prepared for snow. I'm just noticing it has it's the plow the on the snow front. snow plow. Yeah. yeah, they all had removable snow plows. Yeah. And this one's been modeled with the with removable the plow. snow plow. Yes. Now, all of them eventually had their freight boxes turned into passenger compartments because during the 50s when... Uh, all these were being used for was to haul rabid rail fans around. <laughs> uh, having two passengers wasn't going to cut it. So mm -hmm. um, they all had their freight boxes converted into to passenger we, Each with their own window now, yes. Each with their own window, <laughs> yes. And they're really, really fun to ride oh, they on. they are, yeah. So that's really neat. 
Anyway, let's take this one in there and run it on the railroad and see if mm -hmm. it actually runs. I've never run any of these geese models because I've never had a railroad before. Well, now you do. There's and no excuse. So now there's no excuse. So let's let's fire, let's fire it, it up and <laughs> see what it, what it does. <laughs> Start it up. Well, two doesn't seem to be running any better than five did. It's a little <laughs> sluggish. <laughs> it's uh, the gears are stiff, but we have no idea if these have ever even been run. Um, I've never run them. No. And uh, just kind of breaking them in a little bit here. And then the problem with all of these geese is there's not a lot of contact with the rails. Only four of these wheels are actually picking up the power. Oh, dear. And uh, all, all three of these geese will benefit from having uh, a Keep Alive, a, a digital command control system, DCC, with a Keep Alive. And that'll help it get over some of the... The rough spots but it's it's coming around it is it's looking good it is it makes me want to go for a ride on one it does just <laughs> as long as it doesn't pop a wheelie or something it's getting better look at that <laughs> way it goes <laughs> it's actually starting to go that's pretty darn neat i love seeing a goose go down the track oh I, just, I i do too it's yeah and it's real easy to see how they came up with the expression galloping goose because even the models tend to sort of bounce around a little bit yeah, oh i love it <laughs> But that's what happens when you have just just basic wheel trucks here. There, it's a you know it's a car, it's a truck just mounted on, on rails and away it goes. But it's looking good. I like it. It's it's gonna it's gonna work out fine. We just need to do a little more work. Well, it'll be fun to make these things it will. run on DCC right. and sound systems. Absolutely. Because the, it's just neat to, with the proper sound system, you've got mm -hmm. your starter motor and you can turn your headlights on. But just running it through that Shipping whole sequence gears. of rrr, num, 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 <laughs> yeah. double clutch. Num, 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 num. Yeah. And, um, and it's fun to just sit up in the front and watch somebody attempt to drive one of these I things. I want to because, drive it. I yeah, really we, do. We really want to try it. There's a little more to it than just driving a car mm -hmm. because just there's like three different braking systems mm -hmm. on these because, well, they're big and heavy. And if they would have relied on the original brakes, well, the original brakes are in a dumpster somewhere. Right. And so um, there's, uh, I can't remember exactly how it all works, but there's three individual braking well, systems. Well, you don't want your back end passing your front end. No. That would just not uh -uh. work. And, and <laughs> it's very important to be able to stop yeah. something that's big mm -hmm. and heavy. And in spite of the fact that as, as train equipment goes, these are small, mm -hmm. they're still quite big and heavy. Right. And so having three braking systems is good. If it won't go forward, that's one thing. If it won't stop, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> Yeah, watch out below. <laughs> watch out below. But it's just fun, too, to, you know, you apply the clutch and uh, grind the gears and put it over to third. And <laughs> and there's no 15-speed diesel no. truck out of a Kenworth or no, Peterbilt or something. it's like a just, pickup truck. It's like a pickup truck, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just got a stick shift. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, wouldn't it be fun? Maybe yes. someday we'll get to drive yeah, one Yeah, they of these might things. let us drive it. You never know. Yeah, weirder things have happened. Oh boy, there. have they! But anyway, <laughs> we won't. Anyway, go this today. is a this is a really neat model. Um, AccuCraft uh, did a really grand job on these geese, and mm -hmm. they keep rerunning them. So periodically, if you go over to like their website and stuff, mm -hmm. they've got a whole new run out, and they're doing them Lots again. Of them. Right? They ain't cheap. No. But they, you know, like all brass it's models, a... they are kind of pricey. Mm -hmm. In spite of the fact that they're quite basic when you get right, right down to it. Uh, so you would sort of anticipate them being a little less money. But right. keeping in mind that a decent AccuCraft steam locomotive is going to set you back five grand. Oh, at least. This isn't going to set you back five grand. But it is still a it's little, a little, little on the pricey mm -hmm. side compared to what you might think for some really right. basic little brass 
goose thing. But you can you can find them on eBay. So if you're right. looking for one of these, set up a search on eBay, mm -hmm. and I absolutely guarantee you that that one will pop up from mm -hmm. time to time. Because AccuCraft is I don't even know oh, how many yeah. runs they've made on these. Uh, I don't know. It's a very popular model. All of the geese are popular models, mm -hmm. and they've done all seven of them. If you have a goose at home, speak up. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Get in the comments and say mm -hmm. I have I goose have five. The goose. And then of course they're available in mm -hmm. every conceivable gauge from oh, or it's not gauge but scale. Scale. scale from other companies and a lot of mm -hmm. HON3. I, I, I haven't seen one in NN3, but it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, and ON3, of course, is legendary. And mm -hmm. I think they're even available in ON30. Mm. Anyway, because this has just been such a popular oh, it's fun. model. Yeah, Everybody fun to loves ride to have. In real life. Well, it's almost, you know, it's, a, it's such a legendary and fun mm -hmm. and interesting railroad, the Rio Grande Southern. And it went through the most spectacular scenery that any railroad oh, ever went through. Right. And uh, in the 1950s, so many people had a chance to ride these over that line mm -hmm. when they were running excursions with the Rocky Mountain Railroad Club. Right. And uh, um, those, those trips from the 1950s are frankly legend. Mm -hmm. They're no just kidding. legend. And there's a ton of photo photographs and film of them mm -hmm. and video out there that's right. been transposed from the film. and. And whatnot. So they're all neat. Anyway, mm -hmm. Goose 2. Yes. <laughs> well, if you uh, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here comes the blue button. Right. Are you ready for it? Zoink. <laughs> oh. The blue button. Are you okay? Did you drop? <laughs> Lost something there. My French fry. French fry. Let's I'm try that again. Uh, that was a false start. Are you ready for the blue button? Zoink. <laughs> the proper <laughs> blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what we'll be doing. We're probably working on the railroad. Or eating french fries. Or eating french fries. <laughs> see, see you then. Bye-bye.